Hi everyone and welcome back to my bench. Today I'm gonna show you how you can build a LoRaWAN class C device that can respond to commands almost instantly and that you can use LoRaWAN to control these two relays for your actions and devices that you want to control. Now in a previous video that you can check out up here in the corner, I made this device. This is a PME 680 temperature, humidity and pressure sensor that connects through LoRaWAN to send the data to our network server and this is a, what LoRaWAN classifies as a class A device that is spending most of the time sleeping and can only interact on a downlink message so a command coming into the message in a very short period of time after it sends its data so for example if we send this data twice per day for example then we can only respond to command in that very short period of time after we send, while the different class C is always listening and no matter when we send the command, we can immediately be sure that it's received on the device if it's connected to the network. There's also one more class called class B that periodically checks for any downlink messages and that's kind of like a mixture of both and it's a bit of a decision that you need to make uh, when you're building your device depending on what your needs are if you need to be able to control it all the time then you will for sure need a class c device that is always on that is always powered that it cannot be battery powered or it needs a very large battery to just make sense because it won't go into any power saving and that's why this type of devices are usually either directly plugged into the main supply or they're using a large system of batteries compared to just the nodes that we have in class A configuration that can run on batteries for multiple years. Now, before we go into the details of the device, I wanna to thank today's sponsor, which is Altium Develop. If you build electronics, you know how complicated collaboration can get. Different tools, endless meetings, and version chaos that slows everyone down. Altium Develop changes that. It's a cloud platform built for real co-creation, bringing electrical, mechanical, software and sourcing teams together in one shared space. Instead of jumping between disconnected tools, everyone works on the same data in real time. Designers can create schematics and PCBs, procurement teams can manage parts and pricing, and manufacturing can review designs before production, all in one place. Every change, comment and decision stays in context, so no one's left guessing. You can track progress, manage requirements, and resolve issues before they become problems. No silos, no delays. Just clear, connected teamwork that keeps projects moving fast, where it's easy to bring the right people into the process whenever you need them. If you're ready to move from working together to working as one, check out Altium Develop at the link in the video description. Now, to make the device, I'm using the Heltec LoRa 32 board that was kindly provided by my friends over at Meshnology. I'll have links down in the video description that you can check out. And we have just four wires connecting to this two channel relay board. This is a five volt relay board, so I can power it directly from the five volt from the ESP32 boards. Uh, so we have five volt connected here and ground to power that. And we're using just two of the digital uh, input and output pins, so pins 47 and pin 48 to control the two channels. And I have a special code running in the background that whenever I set and send a specific downlink message, this is received by this module and then it flips the outputs on and off depending on what command we send. And I have all of this connected through the things network. Let's go on the computer so I can show you. And if we take a look at the device, I have it within a demo application that I had for a presentation that I was doing recently. And you can see this is a device that runs on 868 megahertz because I'm based in Europe on 1.0.2 specification. But what's interesting within the device is uh, if we go to the network layer settings and expand this, the support for a class C device is uh, what makes this uh, unique. So we can initiate the downlink message and be picked up by the node immediately. If we go on the messaging part, then I can send the command that I have. Currently, you can see that none of the relays are turned on and I have a special set of commands. So 0101 will turn on the first relay. So I'm gonna hit enter to send it. 
and you see that within a second we get that message transferred from the network server through the gateway and to the device if we want to turn on the second one then we're gonna use the uh, 0201 command so actually this will turn off the first one uh, and to turn it on we'll use 0102 so turn on second relay so both of them turn on we can turn off a certain relay so for example 0201 will turn on the first one and uh, let's turn it back on and if we want to immediately turn off both of the relays i have a, another command which is 0303 and I can send that to turn off both of the relays at the same time. If we take a look at the Arduino code used in the device, I'm using the Arduino ID and I used one of the Heltec examples to modify for what I need. The most important part is at the beginning where you will actually need to replace the def AUI app EUI and the app key with the values that you're going to get from the TTN console or your network uh, server of choice. And this is where we are actually specifying the class that we're going to operate the device in. Currently, class A and class C are supported. I haven't tried class B yet, but maybe if you're interested in that, then let me know down in the video comments. The most important part where all the magic happens, so this is, again, based on the example that uh, we have from Heltec. The most important part is the downlink data handle function that checks the received uh, payload from within the TTN console. We make sure that we have two bytes as we are sending before and we're splitting them to action and a relay. Action is whether we turn it on and the relay is which of the relays we're controlling. So 0101 will turn on the first relay and 0102 will turn on the second. If we receive anything other than that, then we are just showing an error in the serial console. And same goes for command 02, which is to turn off. And then 0201 turns off relay one and 0202 turns off relay two. As a special command, I have 0303 that will turn on both, no matter what the uh, current state of them is. This is just an example logic that we can have in order for me to showcase uh, what's really going on under the hood. Inside the setup, we don't really have much. We are using some of the helpers from Heltec that we have uh, and also the connection settings that we have for the helper that we have from from Heltec and that's basically it. There's nothing more to it, it's just the function that receives the data and acts accordingly based on the logic that we set. If we take a look at this image, this is a visual representation of how the three different classes of devices actually work and how you can figure out what's really happening in the background. So for the class A uh, device, we have an uplink transmission. So anything from the node that we send up to the network server and we have two very short period of times where we can actually receive downlink messages. So RX1 and RX2. RS, RX1 usually happens one second after we transmit on the same frequency and spreading factor as we did the uplink transaction. And RX2 is the alternative fallback uh, device that happens on a different uh, frequency with a slower spreading factor. So it's a bit slower to receive, but it's more reliable in case nothing was received in the RX1 window. And after that, class A device will actually go to sleep and there will be nothing happening until we send another uplink. That's when we can check if we have any scheduled uh, commands, any downlinks that we need to get by the device. While in the class B device, we have the standard RX1 and RX2 after the transmission. However, on a certain period of time, this device will actually continue to check for any downlink messages, but there will be some delays in between where the device will be at sleep. So nothing can actually be received while the device at, is at sleep. 
and in um, the device that we just built we are using class c which we can have an uplink transmission anytime that we want but we are prioritizing the safer and more convenient way of listening for downlink messages and when we are not sending the device enters this constant listening mode that it's always on and ready to receive the downlink messages as soon as they are sent. In the previous um, examples, for example, if we trigger the same with the class A device, then unless we are sending any data, then the relay will not turn on. And if we are sending data every hour, then maybe the relay will only turn on after one hour than, than what we instructed it to. So we might miss a crucial timing step depending on the operation of the device. If we need a real, almost real time uh, decision making and an action, then we are forced to use the class C, which is kind of power intensive, but uh, the benefit is that we can have almost an instant uh, reply. And with that, I'm going to end the video right here. I'm going to have links to all of the devices that I've used and the code uh, running on the device down in the video description if you want to check them out. I have a Patreon link where you can support my work with any amount to allow me to continue making these videos. And I'm very thankful to all of the patrons that I have there. YouTube thinks that you're gonna like this video next and I'm gonna see you all in the next one. Cheers.